Dylan is just, uh, he's so titanic. It's very hard to compare anything else to Bob Dylan because he's, he's iconic. Uh, he changed everything. And I, I remember when I first heard him, I said, you know, what's with this guy's voice? He was a folk singer, and you give, give folk singers a little bit of leeway uh, when they, they don't sing, you know, beautifully. But Bob, uh, when I, I went to see him, uh, at, at a show, it was in New York. I don't remember exactly, it was Town Hall, something like that. And he came on stage with the harmonica holder around his neck. And I thought, what, what, what's up with that? Was he, is it whiplash? I had never seen one of those before. And then when he started to sing, I was pretty positive, yeah, he's been in a car accident. One of my favorite bands of the 60s, Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and Jack Bruce, a trio. And they put out a lot of sound. And um, I like the songs they were Jack Bruce wrote these great songs. And Ginger Baker played drums in a very unorthodox style. And of course, Clapton's guitar playing is flawless. Don is, I think, one of the top talented songwriters in American music. Uh, he's written so many great songs with the Eagles and on his own. Um, and he plays the drums. He played the drums and the Eagles, and, and he sang. Singing drummers were always kind of strange to me. How do you sing and play the drums at the same time? Uh, it's like the walking and chewing gum syndrome. But he did it, and he, he's written these very, very musical songs um, with, you know, featuring guitar. He's written songs on piano. Um, Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? I actually got to play that song with Don. Don was playing on his own at Jones Beach Theater, and they did Desperado. Don asked me if I would play piano on it, which I was thrilled to do. I threw in a little gospel jump. He got pissed off at me and gave me the stink guy, like, don't go there. Uh, but it was fun. Uh, he's a good friend, and um, we uh, we stay in touch a lot. We have a you know, a communication thing going on. And whenever we run into each other, we try to spend time together. He's a very, very good man. Just that. Just that progression. Eagles. Um, that's a very evocative uh, theme, and he comes up with those things. It's it's, um, it's a form of composition, just coming up with a theme like that, and he's very good at it. And he knows his chords, and he knows he knows music, and he's a very literate man too. Uh, his his words are not clunky. His words are good. So I have a lot of admiration for Don. You remember Elliot Murphy? Yeah. He yeah. started out in Long Island, and he was like the next Dylan. He was supposed to be the next Bob Dylan. And we both started out at the same time. And uh, I remember some reviews. It was like, this guy's going to be the next Bob Dylan. And I was considered too suburban. My lyrics were too... I don't know much about suburbia. Twilight Tharp, who um, choreographed and, and wrote the, the show, Moving Out, uh, said she based the show on wanting to know what the heck ever happened to Brenda and Eddie, as if there was gonna it was an on, ongoing story about this couple, and I had never really thought about it. I figured once they were out of high school and they, they and they they broke up, that was the end of that. But I suppose you could follow a thread and 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 try to figure out whatever did happen to them. Where'd they go after that? Uh, which was Twyla's uh, scenario. Um, and she, uh, you know, I, I couldn't think that far ahead, but she did. So good for her. Ray Charles was probably my favorite singer of all time. One of the things I liked about Ray was he kind of would laugh in the middle of his recordings if he did something that particularly tickled him. He would, 
You know, he was the first guy to kind of throw in these uh, spontaneous sounds. <laughs> hey! Uh, and it, 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 just the sound of his voice is great. I wish I could sound like him. I used to try to sing like Ray Charles and rip up my throat and smoke cigarettes and twist my neck and uh, do whatever I could to sound like Ray Charles. It never, never worked out. Uh, Ray, I have to say, uh, I don't think anyone has touched me as much as him as, as a singer. Uh, and and uh, just a, an artist. James was, he really changed the game. All of a sudden, singer-songwriters were in demand as recording artists. And I got signed to Columbia during that era. Uh, James Taylor kind of kicked the door down. And I, I owe him a, a, a debt. For that because I, I might not have uh, gotten signed or even been heard if it hadn't been for James' success. I got to know James. We used to uh, see each other at a club uptown, JP's. James and I were there one night. I think he was married to Carly Simon. I was married to my first ex-wife. And we stayed up all night just jamming and playing. And we're having a good time. I mean, nothing unusual, you know, nothing illegal going on. We just had a great time playing together. Nobody was there. It was just me and James using the equipment that was set up in this JP's club. And um, there was a blizzard that night. I think it was like April Fool's Day or something like that. <clears throat> and we looked, the sun was starting to come up outside and James and I looked at each other and went, oh my God, it's really that late? And we had to walk because there were no taxis driving. There was no cars on the street, it was a blizzard. We walked back downtown, um, he uh, came with me to my place, I think it was on uh, East 49th Street, and my <laughs> ex-wife was waiting for me with a rolling pin. She was pissed off, where were you all night? You and then standing with me, right behind me, was James Taylor, and she was a big fan of James. So I just, hi honey, and I ran upstairs, and then James sat down and had coffee with her. So that's another big IOU I have for James Taylor. Thank you, James. Uh, you saved me from, uh, you know, some unpleasant stuff. Elton. Um, I first met Elton in the early 70s in Amsterdam, in Holland. We were on a European tour. He happened to be in the same town at the same time. And... Um, it's interesting because the, the media had kind of portrayed us as rivals, uh, almost antagonistic rivals, which was not true at all. I, I liked what he did. He said he liked what I did. We were both fans of each other. And um, we met and I said, I really like your stuff. Oh, I really like your stuff too. Um, we thought a lot of the comparisons were unfair because we were both piano players and there really were not other piano players around at that time. A guy like Winwood was around, but he was... He was more of a keyboardist, an organist, than, than a piano player. Um, and also, Elton has a lyricist. He worked with Bernie Taupin. So there were a lot of differences between us, but we had to deal with that. I was called the American Elton John for a while, which I didn't think was fair. But, you know, there's not, it's not, it's not a bad thing to be compared to him because he's a good musician and a good songwriter. And um, we talked when we first met about... What if we ever worked together? Would you ever want to work together? Yeah, sure. And then nothing happened for a long time. And it finally came to happen uh, in the early 90s. We got together and uh, did a tour together. And it was great. It was a lot of fun. It worked great for our both our organizations. Um, I enjoyed playing his stuff. He enjoyed playing my stuff. The audiences loved it. And we did it on and off for about 16 years. So... It was, a, it was a very fruitful relationship.